Okay, so Mohammed's going to come up later. He's shy. Um, <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, my name's Lorna, as was said. Um, I'm the founder of Refugee Voices Tours. Um, first of all, I would, I would like to um, thank the Institute for Cultural Diplomacy for inviting us uh, to speak today. It's a very, uh, we're very happy to be here. It's a very important thing for us. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain um, what we do um, and why. And, and to start off, I'm going to explain the story so far. Um, this is a story uh, about Berlin. It's also my story in Berlin. So it goes back to 2012. So 2012 was a year when the word refugee wasn't in the media all the time. Yeah? It was before all of this happened, before there was the so-called refugee crisis. And what was happening in Germany was that the people who were living here as refugees, they were largely ignored. They were kept in camps in very bad conditions often, um, very isolated. And what was happening was a lot of people who were refugees were actually killing themselves um, in, uh, in the camps in Germany. And uh, the, towards the end of 2012, an Iranian refugee killed himself in a camp in Würzburg. This started a movement. Refugees from around Germany who were living in the camps marched to Berlin, and they occupied uh, two spaces in the center of an area called Kreuzberg. One of those spaces was Oranienplatz, the other was the Gerhard Hauptmann Schule, an abandoned school a few streets away from that. So I became involved with these people because I was living very near to them, and um, I started a cooking group. Um, so the idea was to bring people together, to create communities, to help integration, to make people realize that we're all the same um, by bringing people together through something very universal, which is, of course, food. Um, so this was something that was very special to me to create a community, to have a community in a city is not that easy, um, especially uh, in Berlin, as I found. So this was going well until 2014, when both the spaces were forcefully evicted, um, Oranienplatz first, and then the Gerhard Hauptmann Schule um, in a police operation that took nine days uh, and cost five million euros. This was a huge um, story that was happening, but in 2015, the focus changed very rapidly, as we all know. So I'm gonna talk about 2015 in a little while, but first of all, I just wanna say that um, recently the political activist uh, Angela Davis said that the refugee rights movement is a civil rights movement of the 21st century. It is a humanitarian crisis that will undoubtedly um, be a defining aspect of this era. But the stories and events that are in, unfolding are not being told by the people it's actually affecting. They're being told often by biased or impartial observers. As somebody who has seen people being deported, imprisoned, even losing their lives during the struggle, I wanted to find a way to give these people a voice and to be able to tell their own story. So, how can people tell stories in a relatable way? I'm a tour guide, by the way, that's my profession. So, I've seen that people can engage very well with a story during a walking tour. Um, by walking and using your senses during a tour, people seem to be more engaged, it has more of an impact, um, and they remember the story much more than if they just sit down and listen to it or if they read about it. So last summer I sat with some of my friends who I met on Iranian Platz and I, I discussed turning the story of Iranian Platz uh, into a walking tour. Iranian Platz, Görlitzer Park and the Gerhard Hauptmann Schule. So they were really enthusiastic and uh, we decided, okay, let's try it out. So Refugee Voices Tours was born and what it was was a Facebook event. We said, well, let's just create a Facebook event and see if people come. And we didn't know what was about to happen. It went viral, basically. The first tour, 20 people turned up. Within three weeks, we were in The Guardian and The New Yorker. Um, and then in February, BBC, the BBC came and they wanted to, um, they wanted to do a, a small piece about this in their travel show. Um, so, I don't, I'm not very good at technology. I wanna show you the clip from the BBC because you just get an idea of what we're doing. So yeah, that basically shows uh, what we did last year. And um, so yeah, it obviously took off before we expected it to because we ended up on the BBC. And um, then this year we realized that there's a new story to tell. Um, you know, last year 
all of a sudden, everyone had an opinion about refugees and the Syrian conflicts, but once again, opinions were being formed based on media reports and not on what the people were actually going through. Um, I talk on an almost daily basis as a tour guide about Europe's dark and very recent history. Especially in Germany, we've seen two world wars, two dictatorships, genocide, destruction of cities, displaced people. People in the Western world think that we're immune to these kinds of things that are happening at the moment in the Middle East. But history, especially Berlin's history, shows us that that's not true, which is the basis of our new tour, which is called Why We're Here, and Mohammed is going to... This is our idea as well. Um, a, a refugee and a tour guide. Yeah, why, why would somebody who's a refugee want to be a tour guide? Um, first of all, uh, you get the sense of purpose and belonging that a lot of people don't have. They've left their homes. They didn't choose to leave, leave their homes. They had to. They didn't, uh, you know, often they don't have anything to do because they're just learning German or they're waiting for their paperwork to be processed. Um, and it also encourages integration through learning about the history of the place that you're in. You can't give a walking tour in a place that you don't know anything about. Um, and of course, it's work experience. So whilst you're here waiting to learn German or whilst you're here uh, waiting for your paperwork to be processed, you actually get the chance to have something on your CV during that time I was a tour guide in Berlin. Um, for legal reasons, we cannot ask for money, but the tours are done on donation basis. So it is a chance for the tour guides to earn uh, a little bit of money as well. So the next steps for Refugee Voices Tours, um, the websites, very important. Yeah, we can't just keep running through Facebook, but that's what we're, we're on Facebook right now. If anybody wants to like our page, Refugee Voices Tours. Um, and this picture, this photograph is actually from last week. I went to Copenhagen. Um, and there's a tour guide there who's setting up Refugee Voices tours in Copenhagen, which should be up and running in three weeks. We also want to expand in Germany, um, throughout Europe, so we're talking to different people in different cities now, um, because we've seen it's actually a very good way of telling stories. Um, and networking, so this is the best way to do that, to tell people and also hear different people's um, ideas. I've been involved in this situation for a few years now, and I've seen that one of the biggest problems is that everybody is kind of on the same page, but everybody's doing different things or similar things in a different way. And I think that we can all agree that if we're on the same page and we want to fight for something together, then we are stronger if we do it together. So I'm excited to hear your ideas. I'm excited to connect with you. And thank you very much for listening.